Based on recent developments at the Starbase, it looks like SpaceX is on track to launch a Starship into orbit this month. Super Heavy Booster 7 is back on the orbital launch mount after it was removed three weeks ago to finish the last round of work on the launch mount. The major work that remained on the launch mount was installing protective shielding, which was completed a week ago. The booster quick disconnect mechanism also got protective shields lately. A lot of welding has also been done inside the launch mount during the past three weeks. Teams have begun removing the scaffolding erected on the launch mount, indicating that the launch mount works are nearly complete and the structure will be ready to support the orbital launch very soon. SpaceX has recently tested the 20 quick disconnect mechanisms that will supply the high-pressure gases required to ignite the outer 20 engines of the booster. I have discussed these quick disconnect mechanisms in one of my previous updates, please check out that video to learn in detail, link in the description. A significant portion of the water deluge system must be completed in the next few weeks if SpaceX plans to operationalize it before the test flight. Huge underground pipes that will carry water toward the launch mount were installed near the launch tower on March 26. In this graphic created by Chrome Kiwi, you can see how the deluge system pipes, manifolds, valves, and water hammer absorption tanks will be connected once the system is fully operational. Please check out my previous update to learn more about water hammer absorption tanks. Link in the description. Cosmical Chief from the Y Media recently spotted SpaceX testing the orbital tank farm fire suppression system. The system sprays water around the tank farm, covering the ground support equipment installed behind the propellant storage tanks. This is likely to protect the tank farm infrastructure from the flames of 33 booster engines when they ignite during liftoff. Christian Davenport, a space reporter at the Washington Post, recently tweeted that according to his sources, SpaceX will get the FAA launch license for the Starship debut launch by April 14. Moreover, according to Elon Musk, SpaceX is targeting the near end of the third week of April for the launch. So, there is a high probability that the launch attempt will happen on April 20, in short, 420. Like any new rocket in development, it may take multiple attempts to get Booster 7 and Ship 24 off the ground, if so, the launch may be delayed till May. The patrolling helicopter, previously used to patrol and clear around the launch complex during major testing, arrived at Starbase last week, signaling the launch is very near. The final round of Starship 24 checkouts is ongoing at the Rocket Garden, and teams are preparing ship for rollout. We can expect Ship 24 to be rolled out to the launch site and stacked atop Booster 7 in the near future. Starship 26 was moved to the Rocket Garden on March 19 to make room inside the high bay for Starship 28 stacking operations. The ship was lifted with the help of a crane and placed atop an engine installation stand on March 25. At the time of making this video, teams had completed the installation of all three Raptor vacuum engines on Ship 26, and they have begun the installation of the inner engines. The center engines that are being installed feature the electric thrust vector control system, making Ship 26 the first Starship prototype to receive upgraded Raptor engines. Once the inner three engines are fully installed, Ship 26 will be ready for static fire tests. Ship 28 stacking operations continue inside the high bay, and the ship is now one stack away from its primary structure. In the previous update, I mentioned that Ship 28 is being stacked from top to bottom, unlike previous prototypes that were assembled in two halves. The Ring Watchers have recently figured out why SpaceX employs this new stacking method. One of the benefits is that the load spreader used to raise the nose cone never has to be detached from the overhead crane. In the previous method, SpaceX would have to periodically switch between the load spreaders that lift the nose cone and ring sections. Secondly, SpaceX now only needs one welding robot on the ground level to assemble all ship sections. The older technique involved positioning a second robot high up on the wall to reach over and weld the two halves. Moreover, this new stacking method may better match the timeline in which ring sections are produced inside the production tents. However, one drawback of this new technique is the complexity of installing the methane downcomer. Previously, after finishing the bottom half, the downcomer was lowered from the top into the common dome. In the new stacking method, the sump portion of the downcomer must be installed in the ship's common dome before stacking, and the tube portion may be installed from underneath later on. Since the benefits outweigh the drawbacks, the new stacking method will increase the Starship production rate. Starship 31's payload bay section recently received a Starlink satellite dispenser. The dispenser will deploy second-generation Starlink satellites into orbit during Ship 31's orbital mission. SpaceX is constructing a tall vertical tent near the Mega Bay, most likely a payload integration facility. The piling work for the tent has been completed, and the concrete work has started recently. 
Lunar rover developer Astrolab has signed an agreement with SpaceX to send its flexible logistics and exploration rover, Earthflex, to the lunar south pole on a Starship lunar lander mission as soon as mid-2026. The mission will also carry more than 1,000 kilograms of commercial customer cargo, instruments, and experiments to the lunar surface. Flex is a multi-purpose rover that can support human operations, robotic research, lunar surface exploration, and other activities. A robotic arm on the rover can help set up the payload on the surface. Flex is a bit larger than NASA's Perseverance rover and much faster with a top speed of 24 km per hour. The Astrolab team started testing the Flex rover's full-scale, fully functional terrestrial prototype in the California desert last year. Tests included both crewed and telerobotic operations, deployment of a variety of large payloads, and engineering testing of the rover's mobility performance in challenging terrain. Astrolab plans to make its first lunar rover the pioneer of a series of Flex rovers, which would accelerate the goal of establishing a permanent human presence on the Moon and eventually on Mars. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. Russia's Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft, struck by a micro-meteoroid in December, autonomously landed back on Earth after a 187-day stay at the International Space Station. The Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft was launched to the ISS on September 21, carrying Expedition 68 Krumomers Sergei Prokopyev, Dmitry Pedelin, and NASA's Frank Rubio for a six-month mission. The spacecraft sprung an uncontrollable leak on December 14 due to a micro-meteoroid impact that vented its coolant into space. Without coolant, engineers were concerned that temperatures inside the capsule could reach up to 50 degrees Celsius during its return to Earth, which is too high for astronauts to make the trip comfortably. In February, an uncrewed Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft was sent to the ISS as a replacement so it could bring the MS-22 crew home later this year. Packed with more than 200 kilograms of cargo, including experiment samples and station equipment, the damaged MS-22 spacecraft was undocked from the RASBIT module of the space station on March 28 to begin its journey back home. To reduce the risk of overheating during atmospheric re-entry, Russian officials hastened the spacecraft's return to Earth and shortened the time to landing from the normal interval of several hours. Nearly two hours after undocking from the space station, the spacecraft performed a parachute-assisted landing in Kazakhstan. The capsule appeared to function as designed during its return trip. In the upcoming weeks, NASA and Roscosmos will analyze the spacecraft to learn more about the coolant leak and study the re-entry data to determine whether astronauts would have been able to survive conditions inside the capsule. The London-based company, OneWeb, has finished its initial satellite constellation after launching the final batch of its broadband internet satellites last week from India. The Indian Space Research Organization's launch vehicle Mark III rocket lifted off from Satish Dhawan Space Center on March 26, carrying 36 OneWeb satellites toward a low-Earth orbit. It was Mark III's sixth overall flight and the second flight involving OneWeb payloads. Deployment of satellites from the rocket's upper stage began 19 minutes after liftoff, and all 36 spacecraft were successfully deployed in groups of four into a 450-kilometer orbit over the following hour. Over the next few weeks, the satellites will use their onboard thrusters to raise their altitudes before settling into a 1,200 km orbit, inclined 87.4 degrees to the equator. OneWeb had 578 operational satellites in orbit before its March 26 launch. The latest mission, which was OneWeb's 18th flight overall, took the number of operational spacecraft to 614, surpassing the 588 satellite threshold needed to offer broadband service globally. OneWeb plans to orbit 648 first-generation satellites in total, with the spacecraft to be launched on future missions becoming on-orbit spares. The majority of OneWeb's satellites have been launched atop Russian-built Soyuz rockets, but Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year ended that arrangement, and OneWeb had to find other rides to orbit. 36 OneWeb satellites that had been ready for launch from Baikonur within days of the invasion were also seized and have not been returned yet. The next OneWeb mission is planned for early May on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which will carry 15 spare first-generation OneWeb, as well as a prototype for its next-generation constellation. The first piloted flight of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft to the International Space Station is slipping from late April to July. According to Steve Stitch, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager, most of the work required to get the Starliner spacecraft ready for the flight will be finished by April. However, to allow more time to close out paperwork and carry out an additional test of the spacecraft's parachute deploy system, NASA moved the crew flight test mission to no earlier than July 21. The Starliner spacecraft was designed to accommodate seven passengers, or a mix of crew and cargo, for missions to low Earth orbit. 
For NASA service missions to the International Space Station, it will carry up to four crew members and time critical scientific research. The spacecraft has an innovative weldless structure and is reusable up to 10 times with a six month turnaround time. Running years behind schedule, the Starliner crew flight test mission will carry veteran astronauts Barry Wilmore and Sunetha Williams to the space station to verify the ship's readiness. The crew flight test will mark Starliner's second trip to the ISS. The capsule spent about a week docked to the space station in May 2022 on an uncrewed mission called Orbital Flight Test 2. When it became evident that Starliner would not be ready for an April launch, NASA and Boeing considered options for a May launch. But a SpaceX Cargo Dragon mission is scheduled to launch to the space station in June, occupying the docking port Starliner would use. So, the agency decided to launch Starliner in July. Assuming the crew flight test goes well and the Starliner wins NASA certification, the agency plans to launch two commercial crew flights to the space station each year, one using SpaceX's Crew Dragon and the other Boeing's Starliner. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.